top of the morning to you. What a beautiful morning today is. Or started off to be. We are heading into the garden. I've got to uh, get a couple of things together this morning before the day starts, or the day's actually started already. Uh, with me here I have a glass of distilled water and we're going to go through and start one of our herbal remedies and hopefully this is beneficial for some that are watching that have issues of hair thinning, itchy scalp, uh, just to share a little bit of my story. I have been cutting chemicals out of my life, excuse me, <laughs> and straighten this up a bit. Some of those chemicals include shampoo and conditioner, and as you can see, uh, the gray's still coming on. Uh, that's okay. That's part of life. Uh, each one of those grays is a badge of honor. A learning lesson, so to speak. So, on this journey of cutting out chemicals and uh, mechanically processed items, I cut out shampoo and conditioner. Uh, it's been over five years. Sorry, something's moving over here behind me, and it's not a turkey, a rat. But um, it's probably made a home in this loofah. Um, but anyways, back to the subject. Um, in that process of cutting out chemicals of shampoo and conditioner, I've had to find alternatives, um, um, herbal alternatives. And one of those items uh, that I use um, is rosemary, a simple garden herb uh, that is um, a wonderful ally, I guess is the best way I can put it. Um, now, here it is in the background behind me, and this plant is mainly used in culinary dishes and upon finding out more information about it, I apologize, this camera isn't really working. Okay, or the stand. So, like I said, a powerful ally. She works great in the garden. Um, has a wonderful smell. Ooh. It is a rat. <laughs> I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> Anyways, we uh, we get out here. We have three places for her to grow. You better get out of here is what I'm going to warn you right now. I am not invading your home. I'm a guest. And you will treat me as such. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. Uh, she has a wonderful scent. You can, uh, when you uh, rough her up a little bit, just uh, petting her, stroking her. You can just smell the, the natural chemical that she has in her. Um, and uh, she's a bit sticky. Uh, which is why I like to use it in the hair. Um, that uh, I believe that stickiness is what is able to grab particles, dirt, and uh, and remove it uh, from the scalp and from the hair. So I have with me a pair of scissors, and I'm just going to go through and harvest uh, a small amount off of each plant, and I'm careful not to take too much. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to rinse your hair. 
Uh, and now it is about 7.30, 8 o'clock. I'm not really sure. Uh, the shadows are still kind of a little long this morning. Um, and with that being said, I'm just going to go through and I like to pull from the edges and the bottom from her. I don't pull from the direct top and the middle of the plant unless uh, there's some circumstances that I will like if uh, uh, you'll see uh, if it's if it's gotten really thick, uh, you'll may want to pull from the center uh, just a little. Um, and so with that being said, uh, there's two parts of her here. There is a green fleshy and there is a woody. Uh, the green fleshy is, of course, growing out on the tips. This is her new growth. The wood, woody sections are part of her older growth. And so I like to take a little bit of both off of her uh, just to see. Um, I'm not quite sure which one it is that that does the... Um, that has the most chemical in it. Oh, she just smells divine. Mm. So, with that being said, I go through and I get fairly close and I just snip, okay? And when I snip, she just goes down in the little glass of water. Now this water is gonna sit somewhere shaded and cool, uh, usually inside on the counter, out of the sun. Uh, and that's going to um, uh, keep her hydrated until I'm ready to work with her uh, later. Sorry, the wind's blowing us around here a little bit. I have a makeshift tripod that I'm using, so... <laughs> oh, it's just rugged. Anyways. So, now, in here, on the plant, I don't... This can't really be seen, but you can see where I've harvested uh, in, in previous days or weeks and it has formed a Y from where I've snipped and growth has come out under it and is starting to, she's starting to thicken up uh, really well. And so I don't want to pull from those areas. Uh, I want to go to the long, longer pieces that haven't really been snipped yet. And so This one is a good size one. And I want to save everything. Like this little piece just fell off. This is just a little branch. And I want to save that too. So that just gets stuck down in the water. This gets stuck down in the water. Now it is possible to regrow rosemary with a cutting. Um, it's very easy to propagate it and get it growing again. And to get this rooted, um, you want to cut or you want to take off some of these limbs here on the bottom, or these leaves, you want to strip probably about three inches of it, three to four inches, and uh, pull all those off, and make a an angled cut, either way, and then uh, stick it down in some water and let her hydrate for about 72 hours, 24 to 72 hours, and she goes down in some topsoil, and Keep her moist. Uh, she loves water. And so with that, she'll be able to give you a new plant. Um, some people use a rooting hormone. You can if you want to. Um, but as I said, we're cutting the chemicals out. So, and that is a chemical. If um, There are natural rooting hormones. I just, the name evade them, evade my mind right now as to as what they're called. Um, but um, just, uh, I like to choose wisely in those things. Now that right there would probably do a couple of rinses. I like to rinse my hair about four times whenever I do this. And, uh, so I'm going to go back here in the back and watch my back to make sure that rat isn't going to sneak up on me. They get kind of aggressive when they're defending their home. Uh, there's another, and we'll do one more. Now these are fairly small rosemary bushes, so I don't want to take too much. Um, I've been taking off of her through the years, or through this past year, and before that I was buying it, and uh, 
rosemary can get kind of expensive whenever you're using it for um, health purposes. And let me tell you, this works for men and women. Um, and what she's going to do is she's going to clean the scalp and clean the hair follicles. Your hair will grow back thicker. Uh, I was getting to the point where I was brushing my hair and just, just uh, wads of hair was coming out. I'm not talking about just a couple of strands. You know, I, I realize you, you're supposed to lose a couple of strands. Um, but uh, gut health plays a huge part in hair loss. And so to remedy that, you don't just take care of the external. You have to take care of what's internal as well. And so that means dietary changes, uh, probiotics, natural probiotics, uh, kombucha. Uh, I'm not big on dairy probiotics, uh, although some people are. Uh, my blood type is O, and so I really have to watch the dairy intake. Uh, it can uh, cause a lot of health issues, mucus buildup, um, uh, lactose intolerance. There's multiple things that uh, that milk can contribute to in the body or dairy. Period. Uh, that was some of our reasoning to switching to goat milk, um, was it was supposed to be easier on the body and to process. And so, cutting out dairy was, and, and we we haven't fully 100% cut it out. I, I love cheese. I love uh, yogurt. Oh. I love a good glass of milk, uh, not really to drink, uh, more to dip cookies in. Uh, so one of my sinful pleasures. Uh, so this is going to do me here for, um, to do a hair rinse. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in, I'm going to set it down. I have other things I have to do. Um, we have a dog that, uh, Scarlett, if y'all have met her, she, uh, we separated the goats the other night and let them in the barnyard. And we don't let her in because she tends to find trouble. Uh, she tries to dig holes to get into the turkey pen. She wants to know what that noise is. And so we left her out in the main paddock. And she dug out and dug in to get into the barnyard. So she didn't run away. She, uh, she, wants, to, she wants to be with her girls. She wants to be with the goats. So I can't really get on to her for that. That's her job. That's what I want her to do. It just... It's a little frustrating whenever they don't stay where you need them to stay. So I'm just going to head up and place this on the porch. And I will, if you stay tuned, I will show you exactly how to make your hair rinse. And it's a simple process. There's nothing difficult to it. It's just uh, making the time to do it. We don't always have the time to do it, and if you don't make the time, then you'll never have the time. So, with that being said, well, I'm going to head on back out here. We have other things i got to get done. Um, so a couple of these holes that we have to fix. Um, what did I do with my scissors? Seem just all over the place. Well, <laughs> so I just turned 44 yesterday, and I seem to have left my mind at the age of 43. <laughs> so let me walk back up here. I just want to make sure I put those scissors up. Those are really good scissors, and I, I prefer to use scissors whenever I'm going to collect herbs uh, as opposed to um, these little garden shears. They tend to dull out. Oh, here they are. Okay. Forgot I set them down there. All right. So now we can get going on other things that we got to do. So I'll just go out here and kind of show the evidence as to where she's dug out. She did this all in one night, mind you, and now, to fix the hole, I could just take dirt and throw it back in, and... But what's the definition of insanity? 
I believe it's doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. So, we have to remedy the situation. And to do that, I have to go collect stone, some sandstone. That's what we have out here on the land. And fix a hole that she has dug out. Y'all can see that down there. Which is funny because this entire paddock out here where the goats are is set up in hot wire. So she went under the hot wire somewhere and came in when she was able to go anywhere she wanted to. Um, and she chose to dig back into the barnyard. So, but like I said, she just, she really just wanted to be with her herd. That's her, her relative. She, she grew up with them. So she, we got them when they were very little. They were eight weeks old when we got them, the dogs. And uh, luckily at the time we had just had uh, a couple of kids that were dropped. And so we put the puppies in with the goats and they, uh, oh, oh, I see it. Oh my. So Charles fixed the outside of it. Fixed the outside of it. <laughs> Temporarily to keep her in. Look at that hole she dug out. Wow. So she started hitting rock and she stopped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and fill this with stone and await and see if that that holds it. It, it should hold her in. Um, she don't she don't like digging where there's rock. Um, that's what we use to fix the holes out here. Um, the sandstone that we're going to be collecting is up in here in the woods. I just have to go get the wheelbarrow um, and collect that stone. <laughs> She's just running bonkers around behind me. Papa's pretty girl. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. She's a handful. I really couldn't ask for a better dog. She's Sammy is our other dog, and she's with the kiddos. She's with the puppies. Or the, the puppies, the, the baby goats. What's funny is Scarlet likes being with the adults, and Sammy likes being with the younger kids, which works out great for us. Sammy teaches on the ropes, um, teaches them about her bark, and Scarlet looks over the older ones, and they know that her bark. Whenever she barks, they get behind her, and it's, it's the cutest thing. Um, Scarlet barks at the vehicles going up and down the dirt road. Um, she barks at the, the deer. Uh, she's our little hunter. This one is. She'll she'll collect possums, uh, rats, rabbits. Um, we, it feels empty time for her. <laughs> she kills time with it by doing that. And and uh, I know it gets boring out here for hers. Yes. Okay. So some of the rock we're going to collect is going to be from out here. Um, I'm just looking for mid-sized rocks. Hey, Nero, back off, sir. <laughs> this is going to do the story. You going to do it? Huh? Um, so, and I got my work clothes on. I had to wear something that's comfortable. It is a beautiful morning, like I said. We're uh, 67 degrees right now. Uh, it's Monday morning. And uh, I figure, why not now? Is a good time to fix your little messes. <laughs> She's a mess herself. Okay. So I have got to go get the wheelbarrow and the steel pole. <laughs> She's going bonkers. She's got the zoomies right now. Hers is zooming all around. Yes. Oh, take a minute and lap on her. Oh.
a really sweetheart. She's probably uh, she's she'll be four years old this year. So. <laughs> You're breathing in the microphone. Yes, yes you are. Oh, big penny needs some lovings. All right. <clears throat> so also I have to get a shovel um, and um, a few other tools, a uh, pair of gloves. Um, this is fairly cleared out up here. The goats have done a wonderful job at trimming and cleaning and eating almost everything up here. Uh, there's a lot of plants that they don't eat. Uh, some of those are this prairie flock that we have going growing. Uh, there's also a goat weed up here, or hogweed, goat weed. Um, I don't know. It's a biannual bloomer, and we have cut most of it out. It, it burns the skin um, on humans or um, mammals, and um, it, uh, there's actually, there is medicine in it. It's just, uh, it's a medicine that we don't uh, really delve into. Um, as far as being a diuretic um, and, you know, learning about these plants that were taught as poisonous, they just, I don't like using the term poison uh, or deadly. It's just, they're used inappropriately. And so they get that name. Um, have you finally calmed down, Missy? <laughs> so, so with that being said, I'll quit jabbering and uh, we'll get to work and I'll place you guys on hold and go get the wheelbarrow and everything that I need, and I will be back momentarily. It's just a good walk up to the house to, to get it. We're out here in the goat paddock, the adult paddock. Uh, I call this paddock uh, Chateau D. Uh, I am a fan of the Count of Monte Cristo. I love the, the book um, and, and the movie was just uh, spectacular. So uh, we call this Chateau de Yeah, because this is where the innocent get sent to spend out their days. <laughs> just a little literature humor there for you. And I'm actually gonna, we're gonna go set up inside because the the goats or the dogs will knock the, the camera over. And y'all, the price of this iPad, we don't need that. It's insured, but what does that mean exactly? Do they cover the mayhem of goats? Probably not. <laughs> All right, we'll see y'all in a bit. Right, and we're back. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start, I think, at the closest point over here. And uh, I got everything I need, I believe. I think I'll let the goats in to the barnyard to keep them out of the way. They like to assist. <laughs> Uh, they don't realize they're getting in the way, but so I believe I'm going to start here first. Um, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to fill in with probably one or two larger stones and then um, fill in with smaller stones around it. And then we'll go from there.
And yes, I know I have a hole in my britches. Uh, these are work pants or work shorts. Um, <laughs> I've uh, used a patch over them, so. It's open, kiddos. Y'all can go on in. Now, the wheelbarrow may be a bit excessive. I don't think I'll need to collect that much stone, but just in case. Uh, this is a steel pipe that um, Charles's dad made. And, man, this thing is so heavy. But uh, this is our rock pounder. We have a, uh, a flat end on that end, and then we have a bashing point on this end. And uh, this thing will build the muscle up. I, I promise you that. It will wear you out. And uh, thank you, Travis, for that. That, uh, that has helped us out here on the homestead so much when we, we build fence posts and we have to pack around the fence or the poles that we use um, when we need to bust rock when we it, it's just it's come in so handy and so it's been a lifesaver out here so we're just going to head on up in here to the woods and get what we need to get <laughs> And away we go. We're looking for good sized stones. Probably, well, these are smallish. Um, so I guess we're not looking for good sized ones. Um, it's the perfect size, I should say. Now, working with sandstone, you really want to watch out for scorpions. They are a porous stone that uh, those little critters will get up in there. And snakes. You gotta always keep an eye out for copperheads up in this area. They, uh, with our cool temperatures this morning, they'll be laying up against something warm. And I don't want it to be me. And, you know, using these stones uh, kind of feeds two birds with one stone, so to speak. Um, and by doing that, we want to put a, a path up into the woods here. Um, and to do that, we got to get these, these stones, what we can, cleared out of the way and uh, fix the ground to actually have a a smooth footpath to come up in here. Um, so this kind of, like I said, it, it feeds two birds with one stone. And uh, I, uh, I don't like the terminology killing two birds with one stone. It's uh, kind of hateful to say something like that. So I prefer to say feed two birds with one stone. And um, so what I, clearing this out allows that process to begin now we have to worry about soil erosion whenever we take these rocks uh, because they've been placed and there's no telling how many years they've been this way uh, the the people that lived here before had campsites up in here they uh 
they ran a Boy Scout troop. And so that was evidence that we saw when we started clearing up all the brush and everything out of here. They, uh, we found campfire rings. We found campsites. And so I would really love to keep it for that. Um, and, uh, and really enjoy the beauty of this area up in here because it's, it's just, it's really gorgeous. Uh, there's a lot of trees that were struck by lightning up in here that we need to clean up. Um, we're going to leave them on the ground uh, for the goats, but uh, we'll just clean up the, the underbrush, the smaller limbs. Uh, we have a few cherry trees in here, a uh, wild cherry, um, that are poisonous to goats and livestock. So we have to pull those out of here. Um, we're going to take the elm trees out of here uh, and just leave the oaks. And But that's a, that's a process that's going to take some time. Um, and to help with soil erosion and from the soil just running off down into the pasture, I'm going to go through and we're going to terrace this. Um, and we're going to lay... Um, timbers down. That's probably what we'll do with the lightning strike uh, logs, uh, is use those as timbers to help stop the soil from just washing, uh, from taking these stones. Because in nature, when you take, you have to accommodate or fix what you've done. You can't just come up in here and take and expect the uh the whole process to heal itself you can help in that healing uh, by working with the land and not just damaging and taking from her so and i feel, figure that would be probably the best remedy is to go in and terrace terrace a walkway have steps through here because there is a steep grade on up into here and uh and we could do it with some uh low shallow steps um we originally wanted to be able to pull the tractor up in here uh, but there's there's really no need to be able to pull the tractor up in here um uh, we were going to make a new entrance to the barn uh, we have back doors on the barn that we can put on we built it that way to be able to do that and to have a road coming off of it or a driveway. And, um, but, you know, plans change. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing is set in stone. And um, you just roll with the punches. So when those plans change, you just got to keep moving as to what works for you. Now we'll keep those doors on the back side of the barn. It's just, uh, as of right now, it may just be a footpath that goes in off of them. And we got another 10 acres up here in the front that uh, we were going to use as an orchard, but it's kind of out of sight. And when it's out of sight, it becomes out of mind. And what we have planted up there, we've planted pomegranates, apples, peaches, nectarines, and that has just been dinner for deer. And uh, I believe this is enough stone right here to do what we got to do. So only take what you need. And so because of that, we, uh, we went up and we've moved what we could. We've moved all the pear trees down here. We've moved the pomegranates. Now, where we've moved them, they haven't done as good as what they were doing up there, but but we just had to save what we could. Um, the deer have plenty to eat out here. We, we're not in the business of feeding deer. <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> so. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, get this wheelbarrow out of here. On our wheelbarrow. It's loud because we had to go through and put a uh, 
we found a metal wheel out here and that's what we put on the front because we were dealing with flat tires all the time every time we come out to use that wheelbarrow it had a flat and so finding this metal wheel or steel wheel i don't know it went on a wagon or something or part of a conveyor belt um we uh it fit perfectly on the wheelbarrow so uh that was a plus all we had to do was uh find a bolt long enough or and alter it a little bit to uh to fit and we haven't had to deal with flat tires at all now it's a little wobbly but uh it takes a little muscle to handle it but that's okay that's what keeps you keeps you fit Goodness for gorilla glue, gorilla glue. Say that. Uh, the soles were coming off, and I hate to throw tennis shoes away, especially when it's something that simple to fix. Uh, that glue is a great adhesive for rubber, uh, rubber soles, things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's what was able to fix these tennis shoes, and. One of my birthday gifts was going and buying a brand new pair of shoes, which is a kind of an annual thing uh, when I can. It just starts the season off. All right. Yeah, Papa's fixing your little mess, Missy. All right, so I'm going to go with the larger ones in the first. Uh, it'll be something about this size. And I'm just going to throw it down in there. I'm going to be careful not to get my face on this hot wire. It's running across the bottom here. That would make for good YouTube TV, wouldn't it? I know there'd be a lot of people that'd love to see that. Stick your face to it. <laughs> not happening. So after I get this in, I probably will open the gates up and run the tractor across it a couple of times. We also have a, a cement roller up there that uh, that we could probably roll across it to help pack it in. I think that'll do it on this one. I think I might have got too much stone. So I'm going to move this hot wire out of the way. Because I could see myself just having a very bad day with it. All right. And you know, the hot wire was put in to keep the animals from getting out or rubbing against the fences. And it does everything but we are the ones that get together. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times that thing has shocked us. Doing what it's supposed to, I guess. Do believe that will remedy that you'll see it didn't take much time no time at all a couple more in there just to create a small mound
Now this is going to remedy her digging in this spot. She, uh, she don't like digging in rocks. She's got little tender paws. <laughs> now that doesn't mean she won't dig next to it, but if this, uh, if she doesn't stop, then we'll be forced to dig a trench here and then fill in with stone and do the same process again. So, but this should remedy it. She's over there watching me right now and uh, she knows what she's done. She's hiding behind that weed. You'll see her. Whoa. Oh no. Papa's fixed you little escape hole, didn't I? Yeah. Pretty girl. You did that, didn't you? Did you do that? Huh? Is that your artwork? Come here. Why you been crying? Hmm. Is it your kidneys? Huh? You wanted more chicken? Huh? Did you want more chicken? All right, on to the next hole. Oh, all you babies are out, you little turkeys. Oh, mercy. I gotta keep my eye on y'all all the time. They just want to be where Poppy can. Oh, Which is fine. I don't worry about them running away. These animals know a good thing when they got it. Y'all better get back in that yard. Papa's gonna put you back up. So, I'm gonna have to place y'all on hold and go wrangle these turkeys. Actually, y'all can come with me. Let's see if we can get them back in this yard. Now, they should come to a food can. There's 15 of them. And it's my fault I didn't shut the gate. I just didn't think they would go out. <laughs> There's so much in this yard. You know, we, we're we using probably about an eighth of an acre. And not even a full acre. And just on what we live on. And um, it's just not enough for them. So i got to go through and make sure the gates are shut. All that fun stuff I have forgotten to do. So we're gonna see if this is gonna get them lured back in. They should come to that noise. Now I have a rule of thumb that if you can't cooperate and when you act grown like this, then you get moved to a new place. And you do not, you will not like the new place. Because I cut your freedoms back tremendously. Here they come. Come on in, little ones. Come on, babies. Get back up in here. I'll do a head count here in a minute. on the ground and let them sift through it. Now, they don't really fly over, but they'll walk out. Let's see, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And they are all here and accounted for. Let me set y'all here and I gotta go shut this gate real quick. Now, can you see why it takes forever to do something out here on the homestead? <laughs> simple projects. They are simple projects. But man, sometimes 
sometimes you can be stretched in 10 different ways. I should have had the clothes already. <laughs> but I thought that maybe I could trust them. <laughs> Silly human. And then, you know, you can trust them. You know, I just, I, I don't know other animals. I don't know if there's wild dogs out here. I don't know if there's, you know, a rabid raccoon on the loose or, you know, so. That's all. Well, you see, the food's still there. We let Christopher out this morning, so he'll be over here eating it. Come on, bud. You want this? Huh? Well, come on. Come and get it. They know what a red coffee can is. We use it for their water, and we use it for feed. Come on, bud. Come on. So these teenagers, what we call teenagers, they're in this pen right here. Uh, they don't like Christopher. Um, he's not mean to them. Um, they just don't like him. He, uh, he didn't grow up in their clutch, and so he's an outsider. And they treat him as such. So he uh, he stays to his own when he's out. And they're out. They'll only be out until noon. And um, at noon they'll go back up. And the adolescents will be let out. The um, We call them adolescents because we have another clutch that's still in the house. They'll get moved out today. It was a little chilly to let them out this morning in the 60s. It's a little too cold for them. So... Um, there are babies, so uh, everybody graduates to a new a new class whenever uh, babies are introduced. Everybody moves up the rankings. So Christopher is a young adult, what we would call a young adult. So he didn't want any of this either. So. Anyways, I got work to do, so the gate's closed. They'll stay in. Hooray. I should have done that to begin with. My fault. Put this can back in. Let's head back out finish our job. Uh, let's see, I hope I left my gloves out there. If I didn't, that will be another task to run around looking for gloves. So here's our watermelon. This one will be ready in a couple of days, I think. Uh, it has gotten huge. I don't know if you can see it. All right. Yay. I left my gloves here. What? You think you're going to get in here? Huh? You think you're going to come in? He's a mess. Our little messy girl. All right. don't really have to use gloves doing this. Um, if you got, it'll give you the calluses. I, uh, I don't really need the calluses on my hands. I, I do bead work. So, uh, I need to be able to feel the beads. <laughs> and, uh, the bead work I do in fall and winter. Um, and that will, that's whenever everything out here slows down a bit. If there is such a thing.
All right, and that leaves us with one stone left in there. It's a good sized stone, so I'm gonna wait and see how much this uh, breaks down and see if we need it. Flip it over, use this other side. There we go. Now, besting this up is going to allow the smaller particles to move in to the areas uh, that it needs to and fill in. Uh, rain will come in and pack in the dirt around it. Hopefully. That's the plan, anyways. <laughs> Is this side I'm gonna go around to the back side and get it packed in that may be where I need this other rock now the turkeys are here in the garden <laughs> they, they love being where I'm at they do I'm, I'm surrogate papa, so they, uh, they want to be where I'm at. Especially when they hear me working out here. They think I'm getting them worms or seeds or something. They want to come be my eyes. I do believe that's going to do it. And that's going to remedy her and or anything else from traveling through there. Because I think they were shown by a raccoon or a possum to come and go out of that area. And the same thing, if it doesn't stop, We'll go through and uh, dig a trench and fill it with stone. And uh, it'll probably have dual purpose then, uh, working as a, uh, what you call a French drain, uh, or some type of a ditch to let water flow out. So we'll be moving on to the next project. There's a couple of things I gotta go do. I gotta go collect my tools. I have a shovel out there that I left. I gotta reattach the hot wire. Not that it's doing any good. I got to put up my tools and then Get ready for the next project. Uh, next project is filling hay. These goats go through a bale of hay, probably one bale, probably every four days, which that will increase to a bale every two days to three days. You can see it's empty from the last time we did it. Now, they waste a lot. It's down here on the ground. It's everywhere. It's really not supposed to be. It should be in their bellies, but they spoil a lot of it. 
which is fine. I'll leave it. I'll leave what's on the ground, and uh, I make them do a cleanup. Um, and uh, that cleanup, they have to go through and eat what's on the ground. Some of it. Because there's still good hay there. They just like to waste. They think that just because it gets empty, that Papa's going to run out here and fill it for them real quick. And that's not the case. We don't play those little goat games. What I call goat games. There you go, little Missy. Papa's got a hook back up. Uh, I'm really surprised she didn't shock herself, but it is kind of high. We have it probably two and a half feet. Now, it would shock her if she was standing up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you come to see what you've done, what I've done. So, this should work. Uh, I think I'm going to go through, not today, but sometime in the near future and lower this. Um... It just means we have to keep it weed eated more. Another job. Another job. You're making sure Poppy's keeping y'all safe, huh? Yeah. Snarly. Snarls Barkley. Oh, yeah. She's got to run over to snip it. I think she's been getting out more than just... I'm... She's not spayed. Um, we was going to breed her to a, a guard dog, uh, like a Pyrenees or a Anatolian, uh, something along those lines. Um, but if, if she keeps doing this, I'm going to have to spade her before we're going to have little coyote puppies, which is fine. I think that would be adorable. I'd love them either way, but I would prefer to control the breeding that goes on out here. Um, not just have everybody running around doing what they want. You can't come in, little Missy. You don't know how to act in here. Now, she's not allowed in the barnyard. Um, she'll only be able to come in whenever uh, there's been signs of a raccoon or something of that nature. Um, that's when she'll be able to be allowed to come in here. She can't handle it. It's too much freedom, uh, I think. And what I mean by that is she'll start digging around the barn to get to the turkeys. She hears them in there squeaking and popping, and she wants to know what it is. And so, and because of that, she'll, she'll dig holes. And I don't think she'd kill a turkey, but I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out. She chases the chickens and she gets on for that. You know, I, I stay adamant on staying on her tail about chasing chickens. Uh, she thinks it's a game. And they run from her and they don't help matters. They'll go over into her yard and when they do that, they're on their own. I told Charles, I said, you know, we can't, uh, I can clip their wing, but then if I clip their wing, that makes them prisoners. They're, they're only allowed to stay in this yard and they need their nutrients. They need to be able to go roam and be a bird for the most part. So I don't like clipping their wings. Um, but you gotta mind, you gotta stay where I put you. Uh, and they can't, they don't always wanna do that. Okay, so our next project, I need to get uh, wire cutters and the dolly. And this video is running kind of long. We're already at an hour and eight minutes. I'm gonna have to edit that down a little bit so wire cutters should be able to fit in my pocket and all I'm doing today is I'm putting hay uh, down where the babies are I uh, we really have to get them adjusted to hay um, as we're coming into fall they have to know what hay is they have to know to go to the hay feeder which they do pretty good um, I can't complain. They, uh, they're learning what hay is. So, 
I'm going to place you guys on pause, go get a drink of water, and get everything I need for the next project. We'll see you in a minute. All right, so we're back. We are heading back up to the barn. I got to find uh, the little wire cutters. I think we left them up here. Since we, uh, our hay gets bailed in metal baling wire, which I prefer. I prefer that over the, the rope or the string that they use. That string just seems to cut right through your hands. And that doesn't really happen with uh, the metal bailing wire. And I forgot the dolly. <laughs> oh my goodness. If it ain't one thing, it's another. So the, uh, the dolly just helps me carry it down that bale of hay down to the pasture. It frees up a hand, so figure out where it's at. I'll probably walk right past it. It's, it's one of those things that just floats around here. There it is. So, and the dolly is another one of those things with the flat tires. We went through and fixed that. We was at the flea market couple of months ago and came across the fella that was selling these tires and we kind of took a chance on buying them we didn't know if they would fit or not and they do they fit um they are a hard material i'm not sure what kind of material it is some type of rubber but uh or plastic i don't know but they they work great they They're wide enough that they don't sink in the mud. And so it is feeding time right now. We're going on about 10 o'clock or so. Uh, that's about what time I get up here to the barn, let everybody out and run around and be crazy. The goats are in here from the last project we did. So I'm just gonna set y'all down out here and Get everybody fed, watered. So I'm back. I had to run up to the house and grab the microphone. So I'm going to probably end up putting a little beadwork on this. Uh, if it doesn't mess with the, the signal that it goes to. If y'all hear a click click, that's the, uh, the end of the microphone rubbing up against the the beadwork. So I don't know if y'all seen or not, but we finally got handles on the barn. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And uh, kind of taking us a while to find handles. But we finally did. Finally. Let's see. I'm looking for the wire cutters, and they are not in here. My goodness. See, this is where we are going to learn to put things back where they belong. There they are. I see them. I guess now they have a new home. So I'm just going to go through and get these birds fed real quick. So they get fed twice a day. Uh, they get fed mid-morning, and then we'll come back and feed them a late dinner. 
um, and I actually grabbed a smaller can because someone doesn't realize to put cans back where they belong. Just stick anything anywhere. And stuff doesn't work like that on the homestead. Everything has a purpose, or should have a purpose. Excuse me. Back up, ma'am. Go on. This ain't for you. If you flip your tail at me, thinking you did something good. So when you don't use the right can, then you don't get the right measurements. And you can find yourself making 30 trips for no reason, just because you like to work hard. Ma'am, I suggest you find yourself out of here. I don't know how you got in there, but you better get back out. I, can't, I don't know how to trick that darn wall up. We have a chicken that has gotten stuck on this side. A little troublemaker. I tell you what, they got moved up here because they caused trouble down here. Ay, ay, ay. As they say, better late than never. Get the chickens fed and get them opened up. Now the chickens have been on lockdown longer. Um, there's a snake that likes to get up in here if we let them out too early and you know we try to avoid that by keeping them locked down until around noon and that will uh, help us the snake will stay back thinking, you know you just gotta play games a couple of times and we avoid letting them out. If we let them out too early, the snake will get up in there and stay all day. Um, and they'll just eat those eggs, like those chickens lay them. And some of these snakes can eat up to about four or five eggs a day. They're, they're fairly large. And uh, so we, we prolong and put off, excuse me, we put off putting the chickens out immediately. And, uh, and that has remedied the snake from getting up in there. Because they can only get in there one way. And that is through the uh, front door. And this is up here. The barn is up, you know, away from the house. And we're not up here all the time, so we don't catch it. Leave that alone. That ain't for little Akmaloli. Back off from it. Hey, Hokti. Back off. She don't listen. Look at her. See her little beard? She thinks she's grown. Well, she is grown. But she's Papa's, Papa's baby. She was our firstborn. Our firstborn out here, so... is Miko's daughter. So she'll be taking over this herd if and when Miko leaves us. Well, not yet, but when. 
and Miko is about six, she'll be seven this year. Um, goats don't really have a long life. They, uh, I'm not sure, I forget the time that she'll have with us, but uh, we'll retire her. We won't let her breed um, her last couple of years. So I want her to enjoy her the winter of her life by being a nanny. So that's why we stop. We'll stop breeding her. Um, here's my little wire cutters. These are great to have on the homestead. These are fence fixers. I'm not sure the proper name of them, but man, they uh, they are a lifesaver out here. And you can fix your fences. Uh, cut metal, or not cut metal, cut wire, um, bend wire, <laughs> the adult goats won't get hay this morning, um, we are, uh, we're gonna do what's called a lean grazing, um, and we force them to eat the grass that's growing out here. And we won't put hay out for them until tomorrow. See them following along like they think it's their time to go eat. All right, I'm gonna need you to back up. Go, go on, go, or I'll put you back out. <laughs> Trick will be getting these babies to stay back because they want to be with their mamas. We can't blame them, but if we do that, then we'll have to go through the whole process of weaning again, and I don't want to do that. Go, back up. Close the gates. I won't latch it. I'll just close it. Lord of mercy, this thing's just all over the place. Oh. Uh... All right, y'all. Y'all know the rule. Back off the hay until it's in the feeder. It's not a toy. It's our food. Come on. You want to eat it? Come out here. Don't talk back. Just do what you're told. Hey, as my stepdad used to tell me, you're to be seen, not heard. Hey. Back up, stay off of it. Back up, back up. Don't make me show these people how to handle y'all. You can wait until it's in the feeder. You're not starving. So our goats are trained to a, what they call a shepherd's hook. And it's just a long stick that we have. And uh, it's mainly used on sheep, but they, they've learned that anytime I have a stick in my hand, that I mean business. We're going back up, back up. We have a couple of hard headed ones. This may take a full bale. We're gonna see. So, and by having that shepherd's hook, it's just a long stick and it's curved at the end. And we're able to grab them if need be. Um, we grab them. It goes around their their neck, around their front front legs, and uh, they're not able to jump out of it. If we got to catch one, or uh, well, uh, a lot of times we got to remember to grab it. <laughs> Things happen so fast out here that uh, you don't always think, and we don't carry it with us all the time. Uh, 
Right. Go to the other side and get it filled. Now this should hold a full bell, no problem. It's the one that gets in the adult yard. That's a little smaller. Ah, look at that stick. That happens sometimes. I'd rather deal with a snake. A snake. A stick being pulled out of it than a snake. A lot of times, them snakes get caught in that. Hey, Columbine, whatever it's called, during the petting time, and they'll they get packed a jet too, and boy, it's not fun to come across one of them. <laughs> it happens. <clears throat> All right. Now on the wires, we like to save these wires. Uh, this helps mend fences when we need to. It's got multiple purposes. So I just roll it back up and we go hang it up in the barn and it's there for us when we need it. And that took care of that chore. Another chore down. So, like I said, we won't get to the goat feed or the goat, the adult goats until this evening or tomorrow. Uh, they have grass in here to chomp down. The babies have kind of eaten up their grasses. Because before the babies were in here, the adults were in here. So, now let me lock this back before we have an escape artist try to go through. And that's done. Let's look at them. Look at them. Oh, poor babies. We want hay too, Papa. But you don't need it, babies. You need to go graze. You do. If Papa puts feed down for you, you become lazy. You forgot that you're grazers. Yeah, you're natural grazers. It's in your DNA. And we have three hay feeders out here. We got this one, the one out with the adults, and the one down with the babies. Uh, they were all built out of old fencing, an old privacy fence that was uh, being torn down. So we, uh, we took it off the people's hands to uh, build with out here. It saved us on wood. So we hang our little wires up here on a little pole we left out. Everybody's water was fine. We won't have to check water until uh, probably around 1 or 2. Well, she thinks it's milking time. She knows that's where she gets her feed in certain times. Oh, and we have an unhappy guest down there crying around. She don't like the hay. Oh, are you ready to be milked? <laughs> so this goat here had two babies. And uh, we, uh, we lost them. One was stillborn. And one was she killed um she uh rolled a bale of hay over on top of it and it smashed it um, and which was pretty traumatic for her she, uh, she didn't realize what she had done she's a new mama so that was expected so we uh we milked her for a little bit 
dried her up after that, after probably about a week or two of milking. And uh, she kind of naturally dried up on her own. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty sad. And during this time, I didn't know how to collect the stomach to make renin for cheese. Um, that's what you need for uh, certain goat cheeses to make it hard uh, is renin, animal renin. And that's their first stomach. And which means you have to go in, cut them open, remove the stomach. You have to dehydrate it. Um, and apparently it, it smells really bad. Um, but it's, if you want to make cheese, this is something you have to get. Um, now I could go to the store and buy it, Renan, um, a cheese making supplier. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're cutting corners, we're cutting costs, not cutting corners, but, um, there's no shortcuts. Uh, we are just cutting costs and if we can do it ourselves, then I would prefer that. And so, and that's one thing you got to have is a, a stomach of a ruminant, whether a goat, sheep, Come on out, ladies. Come on out. <laughs> so we'll open this up and let them out. Well, come on. Come on, little Susie Q. Little squirrely bird. So we let them out a little bit um, here in a moment. Uh, about an hour or so, I'll come back up and let the chickens out. I don't let them out too early. They don't know how to act. They'll go into the turkey pen and eat their food up instead of eating theirs. <laughs> Off and running. There's seven of them in there. Soon to be more, because we have another pen over here of Narragansetts that are young adults that we brought up uh, about two weeks ago. And they'll be joining together because we keep everybody, everybody of the same breed together. Like all the Narragansetts are together, all the bronze are together, and all the red bourbons are together. And when we let them out, uh, they stay separated. They don't, they don't intermingle. Uh, now they'll fight through the fence, but they won't, they won't intermingle. Um, so let me go ahead and let out the bronze. Um, they're over here in the barn. Come on, bitch. Well, come on. Uh, I gotta find a way to get that chicken out from in between the... Oh, little idiot. I can't believe she fell down in there. I think she was roosting up on top, and probably one of the turkeys pushed her down when she was asleep. So, um, I need to go get my little contraption that we made. Uh, it grabs them by the leg, and I'll... Because where she's at, I gotta be able to pull her up and out of there. I just hope that I don't hurt her little leg. Um, the metal that we put up is hindering her. There she is. Hi, I'm Laverne. Laverne the Lavender, and I'm an idiot. So, okay. I think she fell down, she was up here roosting, and she went down, so that's gonna have to be something that we remedy as well. It's always something, y'all, always something. And there they go, off and running. And what's funny, they can fly, but they won't fly over to fight each other. They'll just fight each other through the fence. Gloves out of here. The goats will carry those off. And we're going to see if our contraption will work on this situation without hurting her. She can't be hurting any worse than what she is right now. She's probably dehydrated, hungry, and mad as can be. But it's her own doing. She's the one that went over that side. When we first put her in there, she she went through the fence. 
she was small enough, she went through that fence and she got in with the adult. The adult whooped her tail and told her to get back where she belongs. Them turkeys are mean when it comes to outsiders. Um, so, look, just up there fancy. All right, so here's our little hook. I don't know if y'all saw the tutorial that we made. Uh, just a wire hanger. We keep that end, and then we make a J off of the other end. And we're going to go up here and see if we can grab her, because I can't. We can't take that metal down because it's built into the wall. Um, I, I have wood over it. Um, the fencing is also built in because we were going to make a hay feeder in between the walls. So, oh well, this should work. Charles is actually better at using this than I am. I don't think. In all honesty, I do believe this will be the first time I've used it because I just I can just catch them. Um, they don't really run from me. They they allow me to catch them. But in this instance, I have to raise her high enough to grab her. And you know, this has been a problem. Um, we have another stall that's across the hallway from them there, and that's where we used to house them. In there, we do have a hay feeder that separates the stalls, and uh, the chickens would constantly, constantly, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, that anytime they got in there, they would fall down into that hay feeder and not be able to get out. They would be upside down, just sitting there, and we'd go in, fill it with hay in the wintertime, and they just had given up, and they were just ready to die. So... All right, let me see if I can get this bird. Where you at? Okay, Mama, hang on. Papa's trying to help you. There you go. Oh, my good. There you go. All right. Back with your people. Sorry. Easier than I thought. Y'all see how easy that was? Catch that chicken with that wire hanger? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now she's she's eating. She's been hungry. I mean, she's been in there overnight. Probably screaming her little head off. Y'all can see her down in there. She's eating everything up now. Oh, gobble, gobble, gobble. So we have to put these lavenders in there because they are they're mean and uh, the tur they can't go with the regular chickens. The it would be constant chaos. And until they learn their lesson, uh, then we'll put them with the chickens, the the nicer chickens. Uh, and they may not grow out of it. Uh, we may have to actually just build a whole coop for them. Her little toenail is bloody, so she, she was fighting that, fighting that fence. So, but we got her. She's back over where it's safe now, so. Um, <laughs> I gotta fertilize the gourds. Um, I will take y'all along and show y'all the gourds. And it's not the loofah gourds. It's uh, these are uh, giant gourds and birdhouse gourds. We have some apple gourds that they're not really forming apples though, or apple shapes. They're They've kind of gotten elongated. Uh, 
which I think they've cross-pollinated maybe. Uh, here's one here. This is an older one. So we leave them on until uh, they vine, vine ripen and we'll come out and pick them right before the frost. Uh, we got another one there. Another one up there. Uh, we have them in pots. So that means I have to fertilize more uh, as opposed to if they were in the ground. Now this plant here is doing phenomenal. It's doing really good. It's growing some good size gourds up in there. They were supposed to be giant gourds. Um, but they, I think they cross-pollinated with the apple gourds. And now I can get a little snaky up in there, so I'm watching where I reach up in there. But you can see them growing. They're doing great. We had four pots down through here of gourds. And some are teardrop shaped. They've all kind of taken the same shape, which kind of tells me they've cross-pollinated with the, the apple gourds. Which is, as far as I know. I've got my wire somewhere. Go back and, and get it. Wire, where are you? There you are. So, our little bill that we made, our pot house, <laughs> it, uh, it's doing great. It's housing everything that we need to. Um, this is what we've gone through. This is all going to be uh, discarded thrown away. It's pots that have broken, uh, too damaged to use. Um, so, but that's, that's not bad. This, you still see there's more pots I got to go through and pick up and collect. So here's the other gourds that we have out here. Um, these were supposed to be giant gourds, but they've also I've decided to do their own thing. You can see they're kind of uh, limpy, wimpy a little bit. Um, they need to be fertilized. That's their sign of telling me it's uh, watered and fertilized. We haven't had rain in a while. So, and uh, there is, I believe, five plots. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's actually six burials uh, in there of gourds. And um, or plots, burials, whatever you want to call them, and they uh, they're doing great. They're just not getting real big, but that's fine. Like on this one here, uh, I'll use it for something else. It looks almost like a dipper gourd, um, and I'll probably make a, a, a dance gourd rattle out of it for a dancer as soon as. As soon as it dries out, we have some really cute ones up in here that's doing some fun things. I'll get over here. Um, where are you? I just saw you all ago. Oh, there you are. Look out. I mean, isn't that cute? Isn't that just cute? Now, this would be a perfect size to make a dance rattle. So, if it stays that size, that's what I'll use it for. And I'll uh, I'll clean it up, um, drill two holes in it. I'll add a dowel rod to it as a handle, and uh, um, beat it, wrap buckskin around it, uh, deer skin, and then beat it up for a dance rattle. Here's a larger one that will get bigger. Uh, this is a bowl gourd, is what I call them. Uh, I go through and I'll cut the top of it off here and clean out the inside, save the seeds, and then uh, this, I'll put a little leather around the top of it and use a Dremel to drill my holes, and that will be used to pull produce. That's what I use to hold my produce whenever I go set up at markets. Um, it works so much better than using wood. We have a butterfly bush there that's doing great. Hi, Christophers. Hi, Christies. What are you doing, Christies? What you doing, bud? You being a good boy? Huh? Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys. I promised y'all to show you guys how to make a hair rinse. <laughs> and I was forgot about it a while ago. I got hung up in other stuff. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, we're gonna need. You're gonna need a pot, and we're gonna add some water to that pot. Now, um, we have to tote our water in. Uh, we don't have, um, I guess, potable water that comes to our our spigots. We uh, we use rainwater as our rainwater instead of well water. Um, we live up on a ridge, so it, it takes a, it's gonna take a, a lot of drilling to be able to get what we need. So, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I believe this is a, uh, a two quart, two quart or a three quart um, pot and on your lavender, you want to rinse it and get all the dust off of it. And um, what you're gonna do is pretty much make a tea out of this. Not difficult at all. Stick it down in that water. You're gonna rinse it really good. Uh, just make sure all the particles are off of it and everything. Now you're gonna have some that gets through, but that's okay. We're gonna strain it here in a minute. Well, I say a minute, it's gonna take about a, you wanna boil it for about 15 minutes and then steep it for another 15 minutes. Grab my little hickory handle knife here. Now you can stick the whole thing in there in the water um, or you can strip it. Uh, just take the take the end and just go right down it and pull all of the the leaves off of it. It's up to you. I I leave some whole. I even put the stem in too. Um, I think there's uh, medicine in that stem as well and like I said just hold it just run your finger straight down it and you're gonna strip all of those leaves off of it this is going to turn that water like a golden yellow or a gold color maybe not yellow um, and um, and what you've made pretty much is just a uh, a rosemary tea which you could drink if you want to um, rosemary tea is delicious I'm gonna leave some on the stem I'm not gonna pull them all off everything goes in I made a little mess here all right and that's it y'all that's simple um, you do want this water to cool before putting it on your scalp um, but you do want to bring it to a boil and let it boil for about 15 minutes or so. And um, you don't want to lose too much water by evaporating the water out of it. Um, so, and that's going to come to a boil, like I said. Uh, put a, a plate or something on top of it, a lid, to uh, help it steep. Uh, let it sit in that, that water and uh, really work out the, the medicine that's in that plant. And... Um, all its goodness and so we will uh after this is done boiling and after it's steeped i'll take a little strainer uh colander strainer i'm not sure what people call this um and then uh, pour the pour the water through this that removes all the plant material out of it and then um it's ready to use as soon as it cools uh i do like it a little warm uh it just uh it's refreshing on the scalp and so it uh it seems to work pretty good and if anything it makes your hair smell great i mean if you don't think that it, it's going to regrow the hair or you know there's really no scientific uh science no studies that can back it up but it um there's some people that live by it and uh, and if anything you know it just it smells wonderful it just it's calming it has a nice calming effect so i like to do it right before bed what i'll do I, it's about one o'clock now in the afternoon 
I'm gonna go ahead and boil this and let it cool and set it to the side, set it to the back, and uh, it'll be ready for this evening for whenever I'm ready to, when I'm done with work and ready to, to wash my hair. Um, and um, and that's it. I, uh, I do a double catch system. Um, and what I mean by that is I will pour it from this directly onto my head and work it, work it in. Um, it doesn't lather or anything like that. Um, I just get it down to the scalp and, and then, um, I have a bowl, uh, a metal bowl here. Uh, and this is, I just put my head over it and I pour this onto my scalp and it goes into this and then I'll pour this back into that and redo it again. I'll do that four times, uh, three or four times. I like to do it four times actually. Um, really no reason. I just want to make sure that it's, uh, it's thoroughly through my hair and then, uh, and then just towel dry and you're good to go. So, and that's how you use rosemary to make a, a rinse. So thanks you guys.